Bag fuel, baby. Bag fuel. Live in full effect. The Heineken is here. Yo, ESSO, everyone. C sounds official. You, you already know. Straight from upstate. <laughs> One of the greats. Rochester in the building. Yeah, we can't say it how I said it last time because the, the killers and the shooters said I said it wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a 38 special. Respect, yeah. man. Thank appreciate you for tapping y'all in. having me, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, know you know being here, dude. Listen, yeah, shit. One of the hardest things to do as an artist is to get people to care about your music and to get people to listen to it. And somehow you've made it that the whole NBA is listening to you. <laughs> Kevin Durant is listening to you, right. posting you. LeBron James is listening to you and posting you. Other people want to get on your records. What is the journey that you took to get these people? What was the business moves you made so people can really care about your music? Well, the journey was a long journey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I went through different levels of learning, mm. different levels of internship. Shall I say? Interesting. As you know a what rapper? Saying? As a rapper, see, a lot of people think like, well, you know, different people got, everybody got different routes. Absolutely. You know, some people might not have to work as long and then see uh, success very fast. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not the route that is more likely to happen for a person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it could be discouraging if you're looking for that to happen for you and then it don't. And that's why a lot of people don't, put all the time that they supposed to put into their talent because they're looking for an overnight success. They hear a lot of stories of meeting someone and that person changed their life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, somebody hearing their music and then their life changed. They hear these stories and they think like, this is the way and the route that it's gonna happen for them. And when it don't, it becomes discouraging. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in all actuality, this is really a game that you gotta be prepared to go for yeah. 10 years. Minimum. 15 years. You really got to have a long, you know, you got to have enough stamina and endurance to be able to run that long. You know, in this, mm. in this, you know, um, and you got to have a lot of faith in yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See, with me, you know, I started when the having balls meant something. I kept having balls during a period of time when it was devalued and it meant nothing. And I waited and stay, stuck to my guns until it came back around and was valuable again. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, following trends and shit. Or like, you know, this shit is what the sound is, so let me marry to that. Now, I might experience with, you know, different sounds and different things of that nature, but actually committing to it, you know, mm. like, like, like presenting myself as a dad. When really, I'm a lyricist and an MC by heart. So senior, that's what I do. Yeah. Senior core. Yeah, so that's what I do. So, you know, first and foremost, I had to learn who I was rapping for. That's key. <clears throat> Very key. You know, like just because you can make good music and you see a lot of things going on don't mean that you're supposed to actually make all of that. You know, you might hear shit from this area, like, you know, music is regional. So you might hear a sound like the Detroit sound. Mm -hmm. It might be popular. Mm -hmm. You might like it. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't mean that you actually commit to that sound. Yeah. Just because it's relevant. You might hear an Atlanta sound when it's relevant, you know, and you might feel as though, okay, I have to do this in order to get heard. That's the wrong concept to have. What about people that's doing it to make money? to cater to the labels, go with the wave to give themselves that opportunity. Like you said, it's a 10, 15 year grind. Some people might be like, do I got six years to wait out this wave? And like I said, everybody route is different. If Very opportunity true. present itself, you know, and you are, you know, you have to do whatever you have to do, I encourage you to do whatever you have to do to take advantage of your opportunity. That's fair. I come from a place where opportunity never presents itself. So you're creating it. So you have to create these opportunities. So, so do you think that 
your longevity and how, how you kept rapping at bars is back in style. And, and that's what you're saying, why Kevin Durant is taking notice and LeBron's taking notice now and a bunch of ball players because... And, they, and hip-hop, too. Because they, no, because, yeah. I was about to say, because they are a big part of the hip-hop community. They do influence hip-hop people, and they have promoted you in ways that labels can't promote themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So do you think that because you just kept rapping that well, you built it's up the it's, it's because catalog? I, not just that. I, I put the time in to work on my skill, okay. on my service. See, I provide a service. People don't understand that. Each artist provides a service. Mm. You understand? So what I mean by that, like mm. if I want to go to the club, certain artists that I listen to in the club, mm -hmm. they provide that service. Mm. Why they in the club? If I'm mm. with my lady, I might want to hear a certain artist. Makes they sense. provide that service, right? Mm-hmm. I provide a service for a certain kind of lane that mm. only I could provide. Mm. The guys that's providing that for over there, they can't do what I do. So once I understand that, understand who I am, it make it easier for me when I go in the booth to know who I'm rapping for. You understand? Mm -hmm. So once you know who you're rapping for, it don't really matter about everybody else because I provide a service mm. just for that. You know what I mean? So being that I became so skilled at providing my service and the best at providing my service, mm -hmm. that's how I end up, you know, becoming on the radar of the greats because I'm the best that did it. Now, if I was jumping in everybody's lane and not focusing on what I provide, then I wouldn't be the best. Mm -hmm. It's just like anybody that provides a service. But how'd you figure that out? Well, early in the game, shout out to DJ Premier. Mm. Early in the game, you know, I came in the game, you know, buying beats from the legends and shit. Pete Rock, Primo, you know what I'm saying? Like early in my career and shit, like over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with Prem one time and he told me something that was real valuable. He was like, Spesh, don't rap for everybody, rap for your friends. Only person that you should be rapping for is your friends. Mm. Not my friend. You should rap for your friends. Them the ones that feel you. Them the ones that live the life that you live. And it's a million people like them. The only people you should be trying to impress is your friends. That was something I was able to carry. It was like, oh, I only rap for the niggas. That's my homies. See, I'm all they favorite rappers. I really don't care about anybody else. Like, I'm my homies' favorite rappers. And mm. I know the life that they live. It's a million people that's living like them. You know what I'm saying? They're 10 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Easily. So when I go in the booth, I'm only rapping for them. And I happen to live the same life as them, so it's very easy for me to relate. I'm not stepping outside. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just reminiscing and shit, speaking about parts of my life or parts of my day. Mm -hmm. And my friends, they love it. So this is where my energy come from. I don't care about the world. I don't care what this person on the radio doing, this person in the club doing. I provide a service for my homies. Mm. Mm. Now, when other homies hear it, that little life of my homies, they're going to need that same service. See, we need a service. I know I was active. So when I woke up and went outside, I needed to hear certain things. Mm. It's not always about me being in a club or being with a woman. Uh, Y'all provide those services. But what about <laughs> when I'm bagging up? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you heard? <laughs> what about when I'm cooking up? You heard? As, as, we need a service for that. Yeah. Like, I'm not in a club when I'm in the kitchen. You understand? What's the mentality when you're in the kitchen? I'm actually when thinking. When you used to be in see, the see, kitchen. See, 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 yeah. see, 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 see. When you hustling, period, on any field, you're thinking. It's more mental. Not really partying. Not really the energy that you're doing. You're not even blowing money. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That's later. That's, That's way later. That's later. So, That's so, way so, later. So, so, so the people later. that provide like that this. service, that service is not really relevant when Feel and what I was doing. I needed something to make me think, calm down, and motivate me to actually better my life. I needed to be motivated to better my life. Yeah. So that became the service that I provided because I knew what I needed. I knew what was missing. With me providing that service, only rapping for the homies, it, it gained a certain level of authenticity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that, that. You know, it's very visible and believable. Certain level of believability because I'm only doing what I do. If I was trying to do what they do, then it wouldn't be that authentic. I, I, I just 
love seeing how the energy is really landing. You know, Esso and I have spoken about it, like to see where you were at a year ago, right? Two years ago to now. Man, how about when I just first met him? Yeah, hey, hey, yeah I mean, from, from the time about, you met him. From the time we met him this Real summer to bullshit. now. Is, is, uh, I, I'm, I'm just dealing it's, with that block of four, five, six months. The, I've seen great strides, bro. And, Yo, I appreciate and that. We, we, normally, we don't like asking these types of questions, but I need to understand and feel like what did it take to get KD and LeBron to post you? Or not to say you did anything. But more so, what was it like? How did it change your business acumen? What did it change for your career? Like, going further. Well, because aside from them, the rappers been posting you crazy. Definitely. A like, lot of rappers post you too. You know, I've been getting a lot of love from the hip-hop community mm -hmm. for the service that I provide. Yeah. So, like, it's not really like what did I do or what business moves that mm -hmm. I made. All I did was put good music into the environment spent time on making sure that I perfected my craft and make sure I could put the best music out in the environment. Yeah. So, you know, I lived it. I woke up and went to sleep at points of time thinking about music. I never left the studio. Yeah. So I perfected the craft and made sure I knew who I was aiming for. So when you do that and you put that in the universe, they're going to react to it. Yeah, I'm going to tell you because KD's been knowing about him but while he's been perfecting his craft, I heard him say personally, he's the best. Now, right, right, right now, now right. right now is what he said, he's the best right. right now. Right now. That means he's been paying attention to the progression. Of course. Right. Now, my thing, you what's up with the Damian Lillard record? Because that was my idea. Dame mm -hmm. Lillard, you better get on the record. You know what I mean? Right. He got what, bars. What's up with the Dame Lillard record, man? Man, I got to check him out. You know, I'm always open to work, man. You I'm know, saying. Dame holla at me, man. I got beats, too. Beats and balls, man. Yeah, we get exactly. it in. You know? I mean, it, it only makes sense. Like, like with that community, because they keep it tight, it's time for them to crack the doors a little bit. Right. Like, mm -hmm. if 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 y'all really want to rap, y'all got to let some rappers in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what would be a great record? What's that? Him, Lillard, and Iman. Iman Shumpert. Iman can rap. Yeah, but Iman's style. Style ain't I think, special. I think, I think, I think Damian Lillard's style can flow with 38. I think 38, that makes sense. the 38 would have to be on a, a Shumpert record. Like, let Shumpert do his first and mm. then give it to him and let him pick the one that he would like to flow Because they both on. got bars. Yeah, like, they I'm both got bars, it, but yeah. they're different. I think, I, think, I think the way that Dame Lillard flow, it would be something... Special that would come about, and then I would do the Iman Shumpert record. That that's just me because I'm not style mad at that. Is, is, you you right about that. Yo, niggas don't notice about you. Me and you talked about this driving over here. Right, this, this nigga used to carry Green Lantern's records. DJ Green Lantern. And, that, and Yo, that's shout how he out got to in the DJ game. DJ Green Lantern. Shout out to my homie Big J, which was Green Lantern manager, one of the homies that was behind the scenes that taught me a lot and mm -hmm. shit. You know, that was responsible for the whole team invasion movement. I'm, like, was these was my big homies. You know what I'm saying? I was a kid, a young, talented kid in the streets. Mm. And I ran across a kid. I was freestyling on my block. It was some older guys and stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, it was like a concert or something. And um, they called me over like, yo, Spech, come over here and spit. Mm. I went over there and I spit. And uh, one of the guys homie Cuzzo was actually Green Road Manager at the time. Mm. So he heard me spit and he pulled me to the side and I told him, yo, I make beats too. Ended up giving him a beat CD. He took it to Green. I'm a 16 year old kid. Green heard a beat on there and said, yo, a 16 year old made this? Man, I need to meet him. If a 16 year old made this, I need to meet him. Mm -hmm. But then I, they, they, Green was in my hood at a uh, record store or something. A homie Quanta Bomb Shop, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met him. He was like, yo, man, I beat dope, man. Nice to meet you, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, from that point, they used to just have me around. I was too young to get in the club, so I would carry his crates, get in the club. I don't even know if he remembered this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, this back then. So, I, mm -hmm. you know, my first time in the club... At 16, was going in carrying green crates. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I got locked up after that. You know what I'm saying? And um, when I was locked up, Green Road Manager used to tell me, yo, when you come home, I'm going to take you to New York. 
you know, start telling me different DJs to write freestyles and mm-hmm. stuff. So, for. Which DJs he was telling you? This was like. Big Mike and uh, oh, Big Mike. This was back, Nigga. you know. This that was back. Like, m- yeah, this is back then. You yeah. know, telling me to write freestyles for all these different DJs and uh, mm. so when I came home at the age of eighteen, they brought me to the city for the first time. This is my first time. Well, I was in a city incarcerated as a juvenile, but this is my first time in the city. You know, as a free as man, a free man. Chilling. So they brought me to the city at eighteen. What was that like being from upstate? Upstate, or- my first time going across the G Dub. It was like wow. See, people don't know I'm from a small area. I'm from a very small city where the streets is very small. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like a lot going on. It's no big buildings and stuff. It's a lot of like dark, mm-hmm. dark like alleyways. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of act, drug activity yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Two story buildings yeah. at most. A lot of houses, houses, and stuff, backyards, alleys, and shit like that. But you know, coming across the city and feeling that vibe, it was like, wow. At this point of time, while I was gone, Green and them had progressed from being a regular mixtape DJ locally to now moving to the city. Now he's Eminem DJ. And this was me coming around, and now you know, I'm around the whole you know Greenland and Shady movement, and I'm just sitting back watching this. You no know, learning, I be there watching Green make his beats and shit, and I you know I be t- you know. I remember when I first met Big J, Green Manager, I told him I spit. I spit for him, and he was like, you know, he all right. So they ain't really, really understand how nice I was until one day, <laughs> one day Green brought me on the show. He had Smack DVD there, and a couple of artists was on there. Green was let me go on the spot. He seen how I handled myself on a station. Mm. I, was, I was 19 at this time. He seen how I handled myself and smoked it. So when we walked out of there, he was like, yo, this is my artist. I looked at him like, oh, shit. <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is my artist, 38 Special. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm your artist. Quick, fast. I'm like, oh, okay, that's dope. We yeah. never signed no paperwork or no mm-hmm. shit. But, but yeah. he just would introduce me. Yo, this is my artist. My artist. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then I became Green Artist. He put me at the back of his mixtapes and shit. I'd be like the last song. I worked my way up. You know what I mean? I'd be mm. at the last song at the tapes and shit. I used to be like, damn, Green Artist. You know? Mm-hmm. Niggas don't know. So I would sit there. I, I sit there and... Pay my position. Did he put you in? Did he try to set you up, or did you ever speak to him about being on certain features? Kind of like what mm. Clue did with Fab. Ah, nah, nah, uh. man. Green, Green, Green just was like he was a little different, man. You know, he, um, you know, he, he, he just was like music homie. We had more of a musical relationship than like than like business. business yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it and it was crazy because um. That was like the start of me learning and seeing the workings of shit. Of the I used business. to be around. So mm-hmm. like I seen Green get other people deals. Uncle Murder, the true life. And like I sat there and would watch and had to sit and play my position. I would be in the studio with Green while he working on Uncle Murder mixtape. Him and Uncle Murder just sitting there working, and I'm just sitting here playing my position. Like Nobody knew until, you rhymed except not, for Green Lantern. Murder knew I rhymed. Okay. Murder like, yo, that nigga nice. You know what I'm saying? But I'm in and out the streets and shit, and I'm just around, just learning and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I realized, like, damn, man. Money. Mm. I want to be a broke rapper and shit. You know what I'm saying? At 19 years old, I figured that out. I'm like, damn, I want to move around in a way. I want to move around. I'm out the city moving around with green, but... Oh, it ain't really the way I want to move around and shit. I ain't looking the way I want to look and shit. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I'm we around these rap that. niggas and we shit. All, we all I feel that. uncomfortable <laughs> and shit. Yeah, you know, yeah. I told Green, like, yo, I got to go back to the town, man. I need some money. I got to go get some money. You know, I th- Big J gave me $300. I went and bought a ticket, went back to the town, man. Got me two eight balls, man, and turned that into a... I'm 19 years old. Understood. Yo. <laughs> went and bought me two eight balls, man, and... That was the end of my rapping. Rap. Not, I, but when I went back on that block, I seen so much. So I'm back in this small town, but I just was like, around. I seen so much. I was around these rappers. He done had me in different places. I was actually, you know, like when Green went and sat at his meeting with Russell Simmons after he left from Shady, I, he had me in a room with him. So while they sitting there talking, I'm just a young 19-year-old just sitting here looking while Green and Russ is, but I got to go back to the block. So when I went to the back to the block, my mind is on a different level than where everybody on this block at. 
I'm like, I need to get some real money it's an in and, out. <laughs> and get back to yeah, where I need to be. Me, yeah. This ain't that, though. You know what I'm saying? Man. So I was 19 with that mentality. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, you know, oh, this shit get deep. You know what hmm. I mean? But, is, that, is, is, is that hustle mentality... Did you bring that to the merch game? Because your merch game, crazy. You sat down, you talked to me, mm-hmm. and you gave me some insider stuff about the merch game cause, because Griselda's big on the merch game. You're affiliated with them. Tell me about the hustle you put down with the merch game. You know, man, it was like soon as I started like realizing that I could actually make some money off the talent, I just was, I said, I'm going to put my all into this. And, you know, when you got hustle, easy to find avenues, man, to make money. Once you get that hustle mentality, you are hype. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just had to walk away from anything that was deteriorating me or, 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 or distracting me from focusing on my God-given talent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Once I did that, it was like, you know? But it's like, this ain't no shit that you could do both of. You got to do this. Like to the people that's out there, like this, this, this rap shit is not nothing that you could do and think you could do something else. You can't play two sports at the same time. You could probably play two sports, but you can't do it at the same mm-hmm. time. I don't know no athlete that played two sports at the same time. It's only two. Dion and Bo Jackson. But they left. They won at the left. same time. Well, they left baseball. And they then left went and then to went. Play. I'm talking the about the sport. same oh, time, literally. bro. Yeah, I'm literally. talking about. The I got same. the. I got the listen, lingo. Listen, we're talking the about lingo. the same time. You got to right, focus that's... on one sport at that time because you got to wake up and dedicate yourself to that. And that's mm. what this is. This is just a sport. Uh, let me ask you this then. The same time. This is gonna be a weird question. Was it hard finding ways to make? money off the music and the merch at the same time? Did it conflict? Did it marry properly? Yeah, man. Once you got a few fans, you got a career. Mm-hmm. See, these people don't understand. Y'all looking to make a hit and get signed and get famous when all you got to do is get a few people that actually like you and then you can start supplementing whatever income you was focusing on or getting from anywhere else. You don't need a bunch of fans in order to make a living for yourself. You need a bunch of fans to feed everybody else. You understand? But just to feed you, you don't need that many people. Like, if you was in the streets and you had a phone hitting, it wasn't that many people calling your phone and shit. It wasn't that many people coming by your... No, let's just be honest, Thank though. You. It wasn't that many people coming by your place of business, but you still were surviving and maintaining. Mm-hmm. This is the same shit. You don't need a million of people to make a million dollars. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So, 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 you know, once I realized that I could get a buck from a person, that's all I needed to see. Mm-hmm. Let me just provide the service and make sure, because if it's a few people that's willing to spend some money with me, it's a million people that would. Mm-hmm. Outside of this. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's and, and, and the marketplace is bigger than any street shit that could be offered. Because one of the, you know what I mean? the things, you know, people are having trouble with is finding ways to make money off music. Do you have an understanding or a system? Well, the or... system is make you got how you gonna make music? How you gonna make money off music if you don't know who you're making the music for? That's one. I mean, from a so the, no, this is this one, this this yeah. is this is yeah. you providing a service, ain't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what is your service? How am I supposed to come to your store? What is your store? What am I coming to your store for? You just rap? Oh, you make club songs, you make bitch songs, you make this song, you make that. But what is you giving me that I can't get from them? What's the reason I'm gonna come to you? That's mm-hmm. the first thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know who you're rapping for. Separate yourself from what they're doing. Don't follow the waves. Add something. Make a motherfucker have to come to you. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the first thing. It ain't just making the music. Provide a service. Be a service. And then you'll grow from that. That's what Fresher said, too. Be of service. How can I be of service to you? So once you do that, you know, you putting yourself in a position for people to actually come and spend money for you, just like any other service or any other business. Mm-hmm. But that's what it is. Like, people don't understand how to make money off their music because they all over the place with their music. Mm-hmm. It's all boiled back because down. Because they're to- not looking, but, but, but 38, they're not looking to make money. They're looking to get popular. And they're looking to gain clout and hope that the money's coming. Mm-hmm. Well, See, you're working towards the money. That's not what they're doing. They're thinking that this craft is just, and the money's just going to magically fall out the air because they make a hot record. And um, sometimes that might happen. But that ain't the motto for you to follow. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
You know, that's like gambling and shit. More or less, you provide a service for your people and you'll be all right. Like, that's how you make money off your music. Identifying who you targeting, then feed them. Mm. Once you got that fan base, how do you distribute that music to where it makes sense? You're, you're it's, getting it's, it's it's that shit is the simplest shit in the world. You, you know what I mean? It's it's like once you get a fan base, you know, um, you get get with a distributor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And um, distribute your music. It's really that simple and shit. You know, I'm gonna be providing all, all the services because I know it's a lot of people out there that don't really understand. And I'm gonna be providing all the services and shit at my website, the Trust Station. Y'all be able to click on there, you know, um, and be able to get all the services and see all the all the services that I provide from, you know, consulting to actually, um, you know, producing, production, all, you know, all this development. You were a liaison. You you hook people up with right. with media yeah. people right. and all that stuff. Right. I think that you distribution lingo too, because that's the one thing you know we have spoken about. People are really trying to see how they can get their music out to the masses where it matters, and they're seeing a return on their you know work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta realize, man. Like I said, it really just start organically. People be trying to like skip past shit. Mm. Like you know, even if you know, you first. Put the music out there. You know what I mean, a lot of artists be making music. I, yo, that's the that main makes artist. No sense to that's me. the main problem for artists. Y'all sitting on things that could gain y'all some fans. You know why they do that though, right? Why? They're afraid of the criticism. Oh yeah, they're afraid so, of the criticism. Then this ain't really for you. If you're not gonna release the music, then that's that's that, you causing yourself a huge disadvantage. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of artists that just making music. And then don't put it out. And also, too, you you have guts. You have the ability to know that I'm going to put out a couple of records. They might not hit, but I know I'm good as an artist. And I'm that, goes, that all goes back to me not rapping for everybody. See, see this is where that, that, that actual confidence... It doesn't even affect him because it doesn't it's not matter a, because I don't rap for, for yeah. I'm the people I rap for. I'm very confident they gonna feel my shit. I'm rapping <laughs> about their life. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm <laughs> rapping about their life. It's exactly. impossible for them not to feel it's my only shit. For, it's, it's only, it's only for, for, them. for them. Now, if other now, people start, start to fuck with it, then that's cool. that. That's cool. But it's, it's, extra it's, it's extra on the side. It's extra on the side. I people. don't rap. Listen, I don't rap for NBA players. But it just happens. They just gravitate to it because it's the authenticity and it's the quality of it. Mm. Some people would be like, let me go say something that I think the NBA players are feel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't got one basketball ball. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. No, I'm telling you some real no, shit. Real, I thought so, about, so you, you got to think. The average person would be like, let me cater to them. Yeah. That ain't how you make music. Mm. You make music by bringing what you bring to the table. Yeah. Knowing who you rapping for and then... It's a lot of people that's gonna feel that. Like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Can can I be fair and honest? I I think this advice you gave is beyond just music. Mm -hmm. It's for all business, whatever field you're in, entertainment, I agree. even podcast is everything, yo. Mm -hmm. No, I it's completely some real agree. Right here. Yeah, I, I, I want to know one thing because mm. I always talk about relationships, right? Right. Tell me how it feels to be the one who signed Benny the Butcher first, mm -hmm. and then Benny comes around and is a key part of helping to put you on in this phase of your life. That's dope. Yo, that shit is beautiful. That's beautiful. Nah, it's some beautiful shit. Like, you know, mm. um, like that shit is beautiful, man, and it's just it's just destiny and shit. Mm. And it all just go back to just like, you know, just being 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 genuine and shit. You know what I'm saying? You like we don't really do shit looking for no return. We just do it. Yeah. And you know, the universe work like that. Like, people would be able to return it, and you don't even expect it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And 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 that shit was a prime example, man. Like, you know, me and bro go back a while, 15 years or some shit. I always knew that he was going to take it the way he take it. Mm. I always knew it. How did I know? I'm a great judge of talent. How am I a great judge of talent? Writers know how easy and how hard it is to come up with this shit. That's why rappers fuck with me and love me. Because rappers know the shit I come up with, it's not no walk in the park. Rappers be like, why the fuck I didn't think of that bar? 
as rappers, this is what we can be like, yo, and this is how we measure talent. Because we know how easy and how hard it is to come up with this shit. So when I mm-hmm. come across Cast That's Nice, Benny was one of them. Mm-hmm. Shay Noah was another. That's a female artist from out of Buffalo. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like one of the best rappers I came across. You know, um, when, 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 when you hit at that high level of penmanship, you already know, like, all this person got to do is just keep going. And it's up. And it's up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that shit is dope. You know what I mean? So, you know, shout out to Benny the Butcher, man. You know what I mean? And the whole movement, the whole upstate movement. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's, it's, it sounds like you've been ghostwriting for a lot of lit niggas. No, I don't even know how to do that. I don't know how to ghostwrite. Mm. Y'all, y'all two going to talk then. Still, like, <laughs> y'all two going to talk. Let me tell you okay. something, tell you something Yo. right? Nah, because yeah. like I said, right? Mm. Like I said, I rap about me. I rap for my homies. I mastered rapping about myself. I ain't mastered rapping about nobody else. Shit. Mm. Like I'm saying, I could do it. Of I'm course. not mad at that, but no, I, I, I see I, how no, it no, no, I'm saying I, I, I could do angle. it. I could do it, right? And I don't mind. I'm not opposed to it. I know I can do it. Yeah. Honestly. What, what, but, if, what if the, like Puff is, I think, one of the illest niggas at having multiple people write for him? And it never affected versus I've seen artists that when they lose their main ghostwriter, that music don't hit the same, no mm-hmm. matter who else they bring in. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just think it's a... I'm saying, I know, like, me, my, my, uh, you know, just sitting back watching me work mm-hmm. is enough to uplift any artist's creativity and pen. Just being in a room with me, seeing how I actually do this shit, and picking up from off that, a rapper will be better. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I, I I actually experienced it with a ton of people that I came across. So I don't really have to ghost write, you know, but what I, I could really teach a motherfucker how to be the best just by being in that environment if you got that in you and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if I do decide to pin your shit, I had the best shit that you won't ever heard. So if you do want the best shit that you ever heard, come holler at me. Yeah, it's a you know, price. Not, come it's holler a at me. Price. I'm not saying I'm opposed to it. Mm. I can have you spitting the best shit, especially if you want some street influence shit and you want to sound that's like a, that's somebody. what you're talking about. You know what yeah. I mean? Because if a chick want, say your shit, yeah, it's going to sound not, totally different. It, she can still and chicks are spitting that hard, hard body. Shit. You can write for a lot of bro. You can write bro. for some chick like like I'm yo, telling you. You can write for Cardi B. Yeah. I believe I can write. You, you for, can write I for Cardi, Cardi I, Dream Doll. You can write for. But you know, self said Dream don't like people oh, writing she likes for her own. She likes to try to put as much as I pay. But we skipped this a little bit. Mm-hmm. At that young age, the sign being the butcher, you was thinking about label situations and shit yes. already. Yes, I already. So mind you, right? Mm-hmm. I was a nineteen year old kid in the room when Green was getting his money. So you seen the process of his deal with. You understand? How much you gave Benny? If you don't mind me asking. Honestly, bro, I didn't give him an opportunity. I spent money on the production. I signed like five, six acts at the same time. Okay. And spent money on the creation of all the music, provided the studio, studio. location, provided the videos, it was different provided back the then. clothing, provided mm-hmm. the everyday mm-hmm. necessities if motherfuckers Food, needed something, everything. when mm-hmm. motherfuckers ain't. Was, I mean, needed got something. You, I was like, yeah. so you know, it wasn't a situation where I'm gonna give you some money because wasn't nobody really worth nothing got to you. give no money. Mm-hmm. I, it's like, yo, here, sign here. I'm gonna yeah, spend moment. the money. I'm gonna spend my money to make us worth something. to make us worth something. You heard? Mm-hmm. And it, it's not like I'm gonna give you some money or give you some money. It's five or six of us. I'm the one that's gonna spend all the cash to make sure that we get heard. Mm-hmm. If it's any expenses that come, it's gonna come out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like I'm giving you money, giving gotcha. you money, giving you money. That wasn't the situation. Gotcha. That's you know straight up. Like, I, mean, no. I mean, that's honest and straight yeah, up. Yeah, like, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's, what's a deal you saw happen with Green Lantern with the labels or behind the scenes? You were like, yo, this a different life. This a different type of money they talking about tossing around. I really wasn't like in the Not, motherfuckers business money-wise and yeah. shit. But what I did see is transitions and shit. I was there when Green got dropped from Shady. Because of the whole Jada kiss shit yeah, and all and of that this. Yeah. You heard? I remember and I that. seen how that shit affected everything. In what way did it affect things? Like, what did you see that shift? I shifted? seen, like, you know, the building shift. And 
know, things start changing. People stop picking up the all phone kind calls. of shit. Like you know, I seen like you know, it, money stop. Money stop. Coming stop out. coming in the way that it. How was. fast did that happen? It seemed like it happened pretty damn fast. Uh, shit. But uh, you know, at that, I I I I hauled ass and went back to the streets before everything. You know, and then um, like I said, you know, that was a um learning experience for me. Want to be in control of my situations and shit. I had a few learning experiences with Green that helped me become the person. Green and Big J, you know, um, one of the most one of the things that I had that that really affected me was when I was nineteen. After that meeting with Green and Russ, when they were discussing a new deal, we all went out to eat, mm-hmm. and we was in Manhattan. And I seen how Russell was walking with no security, people coming up to him, asking him questions and shit. He just moving around. And he looked back and he said, like, yo, you know, I don't have security. I've never been robbed. That's for rappers. Rappers get robbed. <sighs> rappers get robbed. I've never been robbed. At a 19-year-old kid, I was like, damn, I want to live like that. I want to be able to move like that to where I'm rich, famous, and I ain't never been robbed. That's for rappers. I want to be an exec. I'm nice as a bitch. So right there, that sparked mm. my exec mind. Mm. I said, I mm. like that lifestyle. Mm. At 19, I realized that. Like, okay. So I always approach this shit with that mentality. Like, okay, I'm nice as a bitch, but I still want to be an exec. Before so I would go and find talent. And that's how I end up. And people would be like, yo, you should just focus on you. Why you got all these? I had a vision. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Of being an exec, not just a rapper. So I knew I had to go and learn and... and, and, and go through shit as an exec, you know what I'm saying, to really, you know, build that, you know what I mean? And now here I am. Like, a lot of my stability from music comes from my executive moves, not me rapping. Mm. I just dropped a project, but prior to that, I ain't dropping two years, homie. But I've been living. You see how I live? I pulled up to his crib. I said, listen, he said, yeah, nigga, I live like a rapper. <laughs> I yo, said, yo, I yo. said, damn, it must have looked good. I said, oh, because he lives around the block from my old crib. Yeah. I'm not, okay, not going to say, but it's yeah. around the block from my old crib. But my old crib was expensive, but he's on the other side. And I said, yo, I, I, I was going to come on this side, so I'm driving. So we said, yo, pull over right here. So I looked, he said, yeah, nigga. <laughs> you know, like, yo, I told you, all we do is fucking laugh. Like, yo, the whole hilarious. drive here was, was nothing but, I Fast. mean, hysterical laughter inside the car, Fast. bro, the whole ride here. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Nah. <laughs> they get so crazy. it sounds like out of all your endeavors, you make the least amount of money from music. I, no, I make all the money from music. I make the least amount of money at this point right now from me just rapping. That's what I'm saying. Like from I, I, rapping, I, I, that, all I, come from music. Let's get that understood. No, not, I, music. I, I, the music business. It, everything comes mm-hmm. from music. Everything I got okay. comes from music. Came from music. Well, everything I own. Everything I have. Even if it's the merch, it comes from music. It's all come from music. My lingo is meaning rapping, merch. Now rapping. Uh, now okay. rapping. That's another story. Like you know, I'm just now getting my light as a rapper. Got you. That's the money. My money. My rap money is about to come now. It's oh, no, happening. It's, nigga, no, no, it's, it's happening my rap right money. Now. No, my rap oh, money is happening yeah. right now. Nigga, my rap up, money, bro. The yeah. way. I love the adoration that the culture is giving you, man. Like, I cannot open Instagram and not see somebody of notoriety or influence posting you organically. Mm-hmm. That's fire. I was just like, yo, we sat with this dude at the last interview. Right, to right see, and to see it happen, and to, to other people it's fast, but I know you worked for that. Mm-hmm. And to see you just say the missteps with Green... Mm-hmm. And what happened with the building, getting locked up, going back to Rochester, fighting through, seeing Benny go up and everything. Mm-hmm. To now you're like, yeah, bro, it, it talks about that 15 years you put in. Mm-hmm. I'd rather, I'm seeing that as motivating, you know what I'm saying? It's motivating for us. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm all, ecstatic. All, all, all that's missing from his plan right now is shows. And, and what the type shows, of shows comes you? from the crossing over to what me and him talked about with the DJs, just building relationships, mm-hmm. just going outside. Like, when you rapping this much and you see, that's the thing about when you're doing everything yourself. You're rapping, you're selling your merch, you're, 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 you're your own PR. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you got to go, although Kevin Durant is 
posting him and these people, right. you got to go out and you got to now build solid relationships with these mm -hmm. people. You know right. what I'm saying? Because they like so, you as a rapper and I, things I, of that nature. I, not to cut you off, but... No, do good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a different kind of artist from this whole, you know, from the way that I had to actually come in the game. Mm -hmm. Made me be a different kind of artist to the point where, like I said, I seen Russ walk in the streets. He said he'd never been robbed, right? That's what I had wanted. But I'm not even really too big on having to go and do a show. You see me perform, mm -hmm. that's exclusive. You see my name on the flyer, that's exclusive because I'm not hungry to do a show. I don't care less about doing a show. My shit is exclusive. You see me on the flyer, y'all better get there because I'm not a nigga that's going to come and try to... I'm not doing that. I don't like leaving the house. You know? yeah, he don't. No, Let me tell you that. something. He don't. I got, I, got, I got some beautiful children, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I like that logo. No, right, right, That's yo. legal for saying I enjoy yo, being bro. with my he wife. Don't leave the yo, house, yo, yo, I'm not I, mad yo, at yo, yo, yo. I got some beautiful children that, you know, I like dedicating my time to. Mm. I spent a lot of time outside prior to this shit. Mm. I ain't do this shit to spend more time outside. I do this shit to get money and spend time with my kids. So if y'all see my name on the fly, y'all better get there because I'm not impressed to do shows. I'm a hype He's without not. leaving the house. He's not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, 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 like, the regular rapper who don't really understand this shit or got, mm. you know, look at this show shit, like, you know, I understand it's a lot of money in that. But at the end of the day, I enjoy my time. I, I know the people that own these big labels, mm -hmm. they not on the road doing shows. You understand? Mm. They not getting robbed. They not getting shot. They not dealing with none of this thing that the rappers is dealing with. They just sitting at home, possibly with their children. <laughs> While the rappers is going on shows, doing a bunch of this, getting robbed and killed, and all of these things that we deal with as rappers. You know what this sounds like? Me, the military me, system. Yeah, me, personally, I'd rather do what these execs is doing that own the labels and just collect the cash. Y'all could run around and do all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I spent a lot of time outside. Yo, I'm bro. not you heard? He ain't lie. I'd be like, yo, son, let's go link up with Clue. Let's go. So he be, for what? As soon as he said, he'd be yeah. like, for he what? Said, no. He said, he said, he said, no, for real. He said, he says, what time? And I'd be like, this nigga not going. Yeah, that's it. I'd be like, he's not going. Why? He like, I'd be like, yo, too, like, yo. we just started, we, we, we just talked about it. Yep. He'd be like, I'd be like, I, I, I know it'd be late for me, too. Yo, I had but... a homie and shit, right? My homie Ive and shit. <laughs> Shout out to Ive. I remember like four, five years ago, we had a concert in our town. I'm in the studio working. He like, yo, you should come to the concert, bro. Show your face. That's your city. I'm like, for what, bro? Mm. What I'm going to go to this man concert for to show my face? For what? This is his concert. I'm in a studio. I'm right where I need to be. You understand? Perfecting my craft. I don't need to be there networking with a stranger. When I'm going to say, hi, my name is such and such and this, that, and that. I don't give a fuck. At a point of time, he going to know who I am if I stay in this place right here. He like, man, you too arrogant, man. That's the shit I be talking about. I'm like, nah, mm. nigga. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Fast forward like three years later and shit, we in a spot and one of these artists came up to me and like, yo, I fucked out of that and he's sitting there looking like that. Right? <laughs> no, you was right though. Mm -hmm. Like you ain't got to go and chase that shit. You got to chase perfecting your craft and then you're going to become an asset to everyone. When yeah. you become an asset to everyone, you don't got to go and chase nothing. Yeah, You ain't got to go and be like, hey, yo, my name is such and such like Clue going to hear about me. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, I might not have to go and meet him in a club, but we going to... We going to cross paths. We going to cross paths. Yeah. And, and I'm making myself an asset right now. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's what you as a, for. As opposed to, oh, I know such and such. This, that, and the third. Because that shit don't really nothing. I got a phone list full of contacts. I don't even hit, hit, hit them shit. Mm. But what? Mm. I wait until I'm an asset and it's something real that we could do and it's something that we could really do. I'm not asking for no favors from no one. I ain't coming this bitch asking for a favor. I never asked for a favor. Nobody gave me a dollar. I'm not looking for none of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we can exchange services. We do shit straight out of respect. Make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So, do, you, do you still make beats? Hell yeah. But I ain't selling them right now and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you got a project from me, you's a lucky motherfucker. All you niggas out there, I was telling y'all, yo, come holla at me. Buy you a piece of digital property and shit from 38 Spes, get you a project for a certain amount of dollars. It's gonna be worth something. Y'all niggas missed out. Y'all could have had y'all 38 Spes produced album. Mm. That'll never happen now. I'm about to be a rapper. My profile gonna be like this and shit. That production shit is out the way. I'm not producing for the just regular niggas for no dollar amount. 
y'all had that opportunity, I was telling niggas, niggas ain't want to take advantage of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now I just make beats for me and my team and shit. I'm not producing for none of you outside. Motherfuckers don't hit me asking me to buy a beat. I don't need the money. You know what I'm saying? Like Any producers you, you were around aside from Green Lantern that you were like, yo, I rocks with what they doing? A primo shit. Oh, okay. Primo's like my big homie, man. Mm. Primo really like the homie. That's, and yeah. and he respect me as a producer. Mm -hmm. Once mm -hmm. I got his respect, I ain't give a fuck about nobody else. Yeah, he I started off buying beats from Primo. You heard? Mm. I started off buying beats from Primo to getting a text from Primo saying, yo, Spesh, you inspiring me, bro. Yeah. Like, yo, you inspiring me, bro, with the production. You killing him. Mm -hmm. Every time I see your name, I buy it. I purchase every time I see your name. I'm like, oh shit, I read the text. This is Primo. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm like, okay, you know, that's all that mattered. Mm -hmm. You know, he filled my shit. Mm -hmm. I'm providing a service. That's one of my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's the same shit with the production. I make shit for them, not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you don't cater beats to an artist. You just I make... don't do none of that shit. Mm -hmm. I make the shit I feel that I would rap over that I feel. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I'm not sitting here trying to do that. Love this. Let me get a radio hit. Let me do make this shit for this nigga. I'm not doing none of that. A person got to come into my world. They got to come into my world all the way around. Whether it's my bars, my beats, you coming into my world. I'm not catering to nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just enjoying the whole, you know, understanding of the business model, the the mentality of how you getting your shit off, you know? A lot of the times people think it's so easy to just throw the song out there, shit going to happen like you said with the lotto, but you really laying out the blueprint of, hey, this is the journey that I think the majority of the artists are going to have to go through. It ain't going to be I, with. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's doing what me and you was doing with Ghost with the YouTube. Yeah. Because he spoke about it from before. He said, yo, put your catalog out there. Put your music out there. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. like, the more stuff that you put out there. See, I, I I actually was dead set against that. I'm like, yo, put your best out there and do this. But 38 was like, nah, put your catalog out there. Keep building. Right. Once you have, have your catalog out there, then you're making yourself worth something. And then I realized mm -hmm. everybody like, gonna like the podcast from different episodes, from different shit. Yeah. A person gonna like that for this is the same thing with the music. You you, you gotta put out the music because I know everybody likes special for different shit. Mm -hmm. This nigga like the freestyle. This nigga love this record. This nigga love this. This nigga love this. So if I limit myself, because one of my boys, um, uh, he goes by Myers Society yeah. franchise liaison. He's just like, yo, that nigga thirty eight special. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what type of <laughs> guillotine swords did he have in the booth? You know what I mean? Yeah, so. I know them type of dudes, these guys are from Coney Island where it's just bodies flying over the building. Right. So when they're talking about you, I'm like, yo, he, he talking to some them. some noise. Nigga, you talking to these niggas he differently make, make from Brooklyn, sense. from Queens, the Bronx, you know what I'm saying? Westchester County, Real you shit. know, Far Rockaway, the, the gutter of the gutter. Some of these niggas yeah. never seen a Skyway pager. Real shit. We in 2023. Yeah. But I, I I really feel like it's the freestyles that's taking over for him Absolutely. right now that's giving him the popularity. Why do you think and that got, is? And got people recognizing it because it's, it's why. Because he a freestyle nigga. It's, it's why. It's, it's, it's why. It is. It's this why. nigga is a freestyle yeah, nigga. Yeah, listen, he told me yeah, that yeah, for the yeah, show, yo. Yeah. I know he ain't heard the album. He yeah. like, nigga, I watched the free, freestyle. freestyle. <laughs> I said, yo, I watched the freestyle when he did the freestyle. See, I, I call niggas. See, <laughs> y'all don't realize this about me. When I vibe with people, I don't be caring what level or what what thing they doing. It was just a vibe that we had. Mm -hmm. It came from smoking the right. chicken and waffles, smoking the weed. Right. You know what I'm saying? Once we bonded on that, it was just like, yo, gave me more likeliness. It, it, it gives me more of a likeliness to go start checking out and being more aware of who you are right. as things come along. Right. So when you did the Sway freestyle, then you did something else because the Sway was a was a complete body. Shout to Sway. Yeah, Shout out to Sway. Murdered. Shout out to Sway because Sway going to let me come yo, see his film. Yo, that was crazy. That was after. I, right that was after, after, after. I know I was that. like, yo, I got to do Sway in the morning. I know that. Like, yeah, that's, why, like, that's why when I saw it, mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's what he did. That's why mm -hmm. I hit you and was just like, yo, boom. That, that, that was You want to know why we got to give you credit for that freestyle too, real shit? That was a long interview we did. So now Sway shoots early in the early morning. Early as fuck, bro. So now 
As I a, put them bars together on my way there. Try yeah. that, though. Nigga, Say a lot that of motherfuckers don't understand that. I put them bars together on my way there, my nigga. Them is fresh balls. See, I'm not a nigga that go to the, to the station and spit something from oh, off the album. Oh, I Let's hate get that. this shit understood. Ooh, ooh. You would never hear 38 Special freestyling and then, oh, that shit is on the album. I don't do that. You hear me freestyling at Lit Air. My shit is just for them. Mm. This mm. is how nice I am. You understand? Who you talking they telling about? me I'm going to sway. I make balls for that day. On my, I left y'all interview two o'clock in the morning. Some shit like that. Probably yeah. three o'clock. Yeah. Probably three o'clock in the morning. And I remember when you said you going to sway. I said shit. Yeah, I had to go to sway. As soon as I left y'all, I start cooking because I knew mm. I'm about to have an opportunity that I never had before, and I gotta it, smoke it. it, it so nigga, my... yeah, nigga, and I went up there and shot that shit down. But that's what I do because I'm I, I master talking to my people. But I knew that freestyle was something special because of the speed. On how it came out. Not to say production ain't fast. Yeah, that shit I was came like, out fast, right? Nigga, we just did the, It was up. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, he murdered this. And mm -hmm. then when I was hearing it, I'm like... That was right after me and you sat down and eat. I think that Facts. we had linked up. Facts. Mm. And then right after we had linked up, because we hadn't seen it, and then it came out right like like literally a day or two later Facts. after me and <laughs> linked up. And that's why I hit him up. Like, right. yo, that, that shit's special. And I just think that right now, the freestyle platforms... Everybody's using them because people are checking for them around the country. You got dudes in LA, you got right. Flex, you got Clue, you got Self, right. you got Matt, you got you got Sway, you got right. Gray Rizzo. On the radar. Right. You got up, Matt up we, the block. We're about 95. to do a joint called right. a, 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 a Bar Slick. We need you to spit just eight slick bars for us a while right. we stand. Just eight slick bars, no beat. That's dope. Crazy. Fly talk. That's, That's it. Dope. Fly, you know That's what I'm dope. saying? Just, just shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, And those platforms got people checking for rhyme quality. Right. Because rhyme quality left the game for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Now people really want to hear quality rhyming again because that, it just, it, it yo, everything goes round and round and round. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Soon, People gonna be like five years from now. I'm, I'm not big on bars no more. I just wanna hear some party right, records. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Then no, you have fact, to do though. party records. That's and, a that, fact. and that's what makes people stay around for a long time when they have the ability to, to adjust, switch up and adjust and, to and the switch time. Up. But right. this just might be your time right now. That's a Niggas fact. can get super rich within five years. Real what are we talking shit. about? Real shit. You and, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And seeing how everything's going, it's just the perfect timing for everything. Just let everything fly, like you said, with the catalog. With the merge, I, I feel. Like, uh, I'm you, sorry. No, 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 no go, no, go. No, no. I, who, no, you finish. No, I'm done with my thoughts. But who, who's collecting your money? Because we talked about this with Cormega, and Cormega told us, you know what I'm saying, As Cap was doing it for him. But after he got home, mm. he realized what I was talking about because I, I didn't want to go in depth on, on camera and be challenging nobody. But mm -hmm. I. I'm always referring to the mechanical royalties. And, and 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 if you don't want to talk about it, but some people is free to. When you putting your records out with mm -hmm. um who who who's your last record with just now? Uh Harry Fraud. Ha Harry Fraud. Mm. Because you have you have so many with different mm -hmm. DJs and, and, and producers. When you put that out, are y'all just putting it out and making money off streaming? Or when people sell, when people buy the whole project? How's the money dispersed when they buy the whole project? Because that, because that would be thus the mechanical royalty. Mm -hmm. Well, it all depends on what you, what y'all work out and shit. But if you know you're going through a distributor, a lot of times they be one the eighty twenty split. That's like the normal rate. Okay, mm -hmm. twenty go to them, eighty come to you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, and then however you and the artist or whatever decide to split that down, you know what I'm saying. But the normal rate is about an eighty twenty split with a distributor and shit. You okay. know what I'm saying. And that's the way that I go for for those and shit. Then on the publishing side, you know, um, I say you hook up with one of these uh, publishing administration companies that can help going. Not just because you know, ha just having BMI or ASCAP. That's just one form. Well, it's a that, lot of different places out there that, that 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 you have to go and get the money from. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you ain't got the time to actually, you know, go and make sure that you, you know, it's good that you hook up with one of these people that can administrate. You know, you're publishing. Mm -hmm. Do you have one for yourself or you still Yeah, I actually on that? have one and I'm going to start providing those services for artists and shit. At you know your trust, saying? at your, what's the dot com? The truststation.com. Truststation.com. Trust Definitely. Mm -hmm. From a creative level, man, any plans for you to do like a twin EP with you and Benny? It's just you and Benny just going back and forth. Well, see, let me explain something, right? 
Me and Benny did an album in 2018 called Stabbed and Shot. Core fans know about this album. It's called Stabbed and Shot. Me and Benny is going to release Stabbed and Shot 2. Mm. You heard? First video you shooting, it got to be in Brooklyn. <laughs> or from Brooklyn. How you going to be from upstate? How we got to be in Brooklyn? Yeah, nigga. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's like yeah, said Stabbed and Shot. He's from Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn. Yeah. That makes sense. Yo, I got to tell y'all, man. Brooklyn is the most proudest people I ever met. I know a nigga that moved to Rochester when he was about nine, and it he still count. rap Brooklyn. <laughs> this nigga's 39, 40. I'm like, yo, my nigga. Like, I'm not from Rochester, that nigga said, bro. Nah, nah, you from Rochester. This nigga went to high schools in Rochester and all this shit, but this nigga is from, from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Like, he don't give a fuck. Like, he from Brooklyn until he died. Yeah, he from like, Brooklyn. And niggas from Brooklyn want you to know they from Brooklyn. They from Brooklyn. They don't play about that shit. <laughs> He said, yeah, but you. the first video got to be in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, huh? Brooklyn like, like, <laughs> he from, like, they both from upstate, but the first video stabbed and shot got to be in Brooklyn. You know why? Brooklyn niggas love y'all. Yo, I ain't going to lie. You know what? Y'all act like Brooklyn niggas. We are yeah. like Brooklyn niggas. Let me tell you I'm why keep I say it a that. Bean. Mm-hmm. When I was in prison, the niggas that I connected with was Brooklyn mm-hmm. niggas. They was Brooklyn niggas. Y'all they reminded like, me of niggas from my. Mm-hmm. Cause all, Brooklyn is the roughest. Is Brooklyn yo, and the Bronx is the roughest parts of fucking New York, and yo, Rochester is up there. So Rochester, Rochester and Buffalo, Ro- right. Ro- right. Rochester, right. Buffalo, right. Brooklyn, right. the Bronx, right. Far Rockaway, Queens. Right. You know what I'm saying? They like, it's all the same are, type of car. Them was all the niggas that I was in prison with. Niggas just don't go out. Real shit. You just don't go. Uh, you you can shit. go to Queens. Yeah, you can live in Harlem and, and right. be good. <laughs> right. But you ain't stomping around certain parts of the Bronx or certain parts of Brooklyn by yourself. No, nah, that makes no sense. No way. Nigga. That makes sense. That makes it's not sense. Happening. Nah, they cause they the first ones to put me on to y'all music. Yo, Brooklyn man, I, I they they fuck with me. Like mm-hmm. I just it, Fact though, like all how you know you don't even be outside, nigga. He know. Nah, I'm just man, fucking. I'm just yeah. fucking with him. <laughs> I'm on the net, man. He you know the net. Bro, you know bro, the net. The new street. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring him to the grill one day in right. Brooklyn. Oh, they gonna love him in and the grill. And we gonna right. go up. We gonna go to the grill one day right. in Brooklyn. Right. Some nice, some regular right. shit. We just gonna go but, up. One but day. Right. I want to. I want you to complete that thought. The net is the new what? The sh- new streets. Mm. So even I ain't gotta go outside when I got this device and shit. I mm. see everything and motherfuckers. Trust me, Brooklyn. Let it be known mm. when they play me like yo, <laughs> Brooklyn. We fuck with you. Yeah, <laughs> like yes, they, they, do, they let that shit be known. Definitely. That's so right. stabbing shot part two is coming out when exactly? Or y'all working? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a strong possibility it's gonna come out twenty twenty three. End. Hey, yo, Benny Butcher, we need you to come sit with us when that stabbed and shot about to both come of them out, come back I'm together. Saying. I want to see both now, of y'all. I, I, I don't want you know thirty eight blowing up. He might be with Kevin Durant or LeBron. He might not have time to come sit listen, back down with listen, us. All you I know wanna, what I'm saying? All I he don't come outside. Hold on. Yeah, all I don't I come see. outside too tough, but I always got time for the homies. Yeah, I know, when, I know, when, I know. When, when, when the Lakers play the Nets, yeah, you sit in courtside, right? That's it. And then when when it's halftime, you performing. <laughs> and then you shoot from half court one of them shots, and they, they know. They just had Lola Brook there. So they, they had 38 special. Yeah. 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 That would be lit. Yo, I'm, I'm in the building. We in the that, building for that. Down, Real I'm, shit. I'm, I'm, I'm in the building. We in the building for that. Word. I'm in the building. Yeah, I just seen them warming up to my shit yesterday and the next day before the game and shit. You know, they was warming up <laughs> before, right before the game. Where Brooklyn. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but he put in Queens on the map differently, though. I can't front. I'm a Queens nigga. South, South Side Jamaica, to be what, exact. You know what, I'm Cre- what, what motivates you? Even though you've given everything, what's your motivation of getting up and doing what you do, man? Because you don't care for the fame. You don't care for certain I shit. I know time limited. Mm. You heard? I know that shit is limited. I got a limited amount of time to do what I got to do. Facts. You heard? And I ain't trying to dedicate all of the time to doing it. I'm trying to do it, get it done, and enjoy the rest of it. That I'm, I want to go to the beach. That's yeah. me, bro. I want to do what I want to do, and I want to go retire <laughs> on the beach. I want to wake up to the beach every day and put my feet in the sand, bro. Real shit. That's all I want to do. That's that's my end all to be all. That's my goal. Real shit. You know what I'm saying be with my family, chilling out. I, I actually relish stepping up to help take care of my family because because for years my father and mother they lived off their retirement they really didn't need nothing but now my mother's older Mm -hmm. it takes care around the clock care to help take care of her you know what i'm saying so now after all of these years of me making money and keeping all my money to myself thank god i got this to have my money 
start going back up because I relish being able to help my parents. I like so, paying the phone bill, sending the money, that type of shit. Yeah, that groceries. shit feels Don't great. worry about mm-hmm. it. Everything I got this. My father calling me like nigga, what kind of coach you? Have? You you want one of these coats, nigga? Whether you gonna wear it or not, Real I'm shit. coming. If I'm coming with that Yo, thing, I relish that shit. So I mm. feel what you saying. Being in the house, like I just took my wife to go get a new car the other day, but they tried to stick me up, so I couldn't even get the yeah. car for it. You know what I'm right. saying? So I right. said, "Yo, I'm gonna go buy another car so we can have two cars." I don't, I don't drive. I don't. Right. I rode. I drove your car here today. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? I don't even like he dropping me off to the airport. And shit, right. You know what I'm I don't like driving either. I don't. Yeah, but, I just do it for everybody. Yeah. How you fucking love it? No, goes. He fucking loves. No, y'all it. been in the car with me. He fuck yeah. He, he just of, he's an like, angry man behind no, the wheel. Bro. Let me tell you, there's a special place from for mother effers who waste green lights. The light be green. They don't want to drive, and then when it turn red. <laughs> Yo, like, no, bro. Yo. I be chilling. I count down in my head. I'm like, yo, it's been four seconds. You ain't moved from the green light. Right. He right. got That's... a video he got to go to. Oh, all right, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I definitely know that. All you right, know what special. I'm saying? So I, you know, no, no, just this. This is one of ghost questions. Ooh, what is that? Oh, a sticker. Ooh, ooh 30 specials here. Oh, bag fuel stickers. Believe it. Right. Oh my God, thirty eight. Let me just give you one of these. Yo, I you know, just stick this, it wherever you can stick it. Pause. Put this on a car. I'm ooh, put this on a car somewhere, man. Ooh, but ooh, uh, yo, merch. Yeah, I merch game and I promotion game. You ain't never gonna see nothing like this, and it's coming. It's coming. Watch. It's coming. Special. And any any feature you ever try to go hard for that you was like, oh man, I need this, but this price is insane, or or it didn't happen because the relationship. Nah, hell no. I don't like paying for features. I came in a game spending money. That ain't get me no fucking wear. Mm. Buying and shit from niggas, paying for looks. I'm not paying for no look. What I did was mm. I started working and becoming a look. Mm. And then I started getting all my features for free. You heard? He started working got a, and becoming I'm a look. I like working. that. So, like, they want to skip past the work part and just be next to the nigga that's lit. That's y'all problem. Y'all yeah, want to pay for that. Pay. I don't want work. I just want a nigga. I, he lit. He put in the work. I want to get next to him. You're going to have to pay for that. But and that's, that's the way that that goes. Mm-hmm. So, me, I'm not trying to skip the work. So, I don't want even want to do nothing that's going to skip the work. If mm. I got to pay to get with you, I just ain't there yet. I ain't gotcha. there yet. So, I'm going to wait till I get there. Woo, that's you know a, what I'm saying? I mean, yo, yo, we put a lot of work in too to get people like his him, yeah. himself and people to be willing to come sit down with us. We put in Real a lot shit. of work and had to be on multiple platforms. We we wasn't just on the other barbershop platform. We was on this at fifty hot new hip hip, hip hop, and people don't even know that. Right, putting that grind down. Making ourselves worthwhile for people to come sit with us, help help, help helping to get my craft together. I'm still right. learning. Right. You know what I'm saying? To have people know that we're gonna ask the right questions, that we ain't on clickbait. Like we don't do none of that type of stuff. Right. It's, it's hard vibing. to stay on building, mm-hmm. and, and although that we're vibing, we're still finding a way to keep the conversation on the business of music and showing people how to make money. Because his route. And how he looks at the music business is totally different than anybody. That I think sat his route his is the chair, bro. Real shit. I think his route, especially with his website, niggas don't got time. To, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I feel you, but niggas don't got time. Like, like he he chose to be like, I'm a boat back to the street. Niggas can't do that. I got you. He right. did time. Niggas can't do that. Right. Let me tell you this. You know what I'm saying? These same rapping niggas, right? I don't watch niggas spend ten years in front of the block, in front of the corner store. They got time to take the route Spech took. How many niggas that's right now in Southside that you done left, they still in front of that corner? I'll stop you when you stop telling facts, so I'm going to be quiet Mm because you're right. Niggas do got 10 years to dedicate. (laughs) In front it's of the it, corner yeah. store. Real about shit. nothing. Just like niggas just can about... take 10 years to save $5,000, too. You, I'm going to shut up, too, then. Back <laughs> fuel. We're done. Bam. 38 special. Give them Trust. that website. Ayo, hey, the truststation.com. Make sure y'all go there and get y'all some of this good merch. Great quality shit. Man. Absolutely, I see. Make sure Talk y'all about go... your gram, too, because your gram's Ayo, not your I exact am name. Spesh, man. I-A-M-S-P-E-S-H. I am special. Make sure y'all follow me on all my social medias. I A M. S P E S H. Trust. Next time we see each other, Brooklyn Nets game. We no, have we get the eight Trust. bars. And eight. yo, like, subscribe, super thanks, share, backfield TV. Thank you. Woo!